Hey, everybody. Ed Billings here in Chapel Hill. And Jeffy Moultrie, San Diego, California. We are really excited to bring you an interview today with Mark Golden of the Golden Group. And this is part of our series on three realtors meet in a bar. Uh, Mark is a fantastic agent, uh, a top producer down in Atlanta. Uh, he was with he had been with three other firms before starting his firm, and you're going to hear some great takeaways. I know, uh, Jeffy, you had a couple things jump out at you to be listening. Yeah, for. yeah. I I just really challenge everybody who's listening to this podcast today to listen to the undertone of what Mark is saying. There there's some big ones in there. One is he always plays up. He talks about, you know, playing basketball with people that are better than he is, spending time with realtors that are better than he is. And it just pushes him and pushes him and pushes it. I, I just, wow, I love that. Yeah. Um, do you have one that you want to share? I was going to say, just be listening for the pivot points. I think that's yeah. really interesting. He's a guy that's uh, really about systems and we talk about that. We don't want to mm -hmm. give too much away, but it's, mm -hmm. it's worth a listen. You'll learn a lot. Mark was the very first person I met at Peak, and I am just so grateful that I got the opportunity to meet you because you're you're a pretty special guy. It was a good it was a, it was a good a good encounter, and we've been friends since. It's been nice. Yeah, we have. It's, it's been awesome. So I have my first question, which, by the way, Mark wanted to know what the questions were in advance, and little stingy Ed wouldn't give them to him. So, <laughs> yeah. Mark, feel free to no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. and I'll send you the questions in advance. I was like, uh -huh. I don't need them, but if you want to send them. And then yeah. I said, well, where are those questions you're going to send? Yeah. It's like, well, we're not really going to send you the questions. Yeah, that was to get okay. you to say yes. Yeah, the questions oh. are coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then questions the questions never came. Bait that and is, switch. That okay. is so funny. Well, oh, where, where we love oh, to start good. is to have you, Mark, take us back to the beginning. Um, kind of what was going on in life when you became a realtor? Let's start there. Oh, good question. Good question. I was, um, let's see, I was married for a few years mm -hmm. and um, uh, trying to, I was, had been working with my father okay. and um, I have an absolutely great relationship with my father. He was in the telecommunications business mm -hmm. and I had just left another business prior to that and gone to work for him um, and then got married. And um, while my relationship with my father is great, working with him was not so great. So I knew I wanted to do something different. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, my fiance and I had um, uh, gone under contract on a home and I liked working uh, with the realtor. I, I, I kind of thought some things could be a little different, but I enjoyed the process. I saw the commission check he was making at the end for the work that he was doing. And he worked hard, but I thought that was, and I always thought the people who I always knew to be more successful than I were people who were, were involved in real estate. They always had, whether that was their primary thing or a side thing, they always were really uh, somehow or another in, in touch with real estate. So I thought yeah. that would be a neat thing to get into. And I looked into yeah. it and the rest, as they say, is history. The rest is history. And that's 20 plus years, yeah? 23. 23. 23. I love yeah. that. I love that. So did you have any fears or any resistance like from your fiance? Was she's like, wait, wait a minute. Are you going to go get a job that doesn't have a normal paycheck? What's happening here? Well, that was her. That was actually her only fear was it's, it's not going to be a, a check every other week. Yeah. Like I've almost never had a check every other week. I've always <laughs> been more of a commissioned kind of guy. So yeah. I was comfortable with it. And, when she saw that I was doing well, you know, that, that, uh, fear went away, but yeah. So that's, that's good. And your dad was supportive of that move. Yeah. I think he also realized <laughs> that let's not ruin a good relationship. <laughs> you, you go do your thing. We'll remain friends. <laughs> was he leaving like the real estate section out on the, on the, on the, on the table? And was he like, Hey, there's a course available to go get your license. <laughs> Right, right, my, right. My, no, my father was my father was very, very successful in the telecom business and yeah. wanted me to continue on in, in, in that in his success and yeah. maybe take over his company and do that thing. But I found I didn't really like it. The telecom business was one that changed every single day. The players changed, the mm -hmm. rules changed, the mm -hmm. regulations changed. And that to me was more unsettling than 
maybe I'll get a check when I get a commission, which might right. be 30 days from now. And it might be, you know, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it just wasn't for me, but I think he realized it wasn't for me. And yeah, you know, your I, parents always just want you to be successful. So. Yeah. And I, I can imagine that might've um, been a little difficult to go through because it sounded like there might be a little bit of, there was a legacy thing that you were maybe fulfilling or on the path to do. And then you had to pivot away from that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But I think he also realized, gosh, if, if, if Mark stays, the great relationship that we have will mm. not be so great anymore. Yeah. So I think he was all, I mean, I think he was supportive of me going on, even though he would have liked to have seen me, you know, continue on in that, in that role. Right. Right. So, well, maybe we could roll into getting started. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that a little yeah, bit. So, let's do it. so that was around 2010 then, right? So you're, you're no 2000 or 2000. 2000. Excuse me, I messed up. Oh no no no, would be, no no no! It would be that's when I started. I'm offering you. It would have been um, 2000. Yeah, it would have been nine. Uh, yeah, no, I got started in this business in 2000. So that'd have been 1999. Okay, gotcha. It's crazy. I, it's funny how the years fly. Okay, so <laughs> a minute, a minute, a minute. I have my license. I have my, I have my license for. It's so funny. We're doing simple addition. I always joke to people. Yeah. All I can do is multiply by three percent. <laughs> um, That's it. Exactly. I can but, take that number but, um, like that. <laughs> no, so I, I, I got my license in two thousand. So this was occurring in in nineteen ninety. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so you, so you get your license and you're getting up and running. Did you go work for a larger yeah. firm or how did you get started? No, I actually went to work for the guy who was the agent that I told you that sold us the house. I love this. And oh, he, did you really? Did you give him some so, tips? <laughs> yeah, so I, I approached, well, so no, so I approached him and um, he used to be a very big producer with, um, a large real estate franchise. Um, and he was very successful and he went out on his own and he bought into a small flat fee franchise. And we had this agreement of what it was. And six months in, I realized this guy's a great sales agent, but he's, he's not a great broker. He's not a mm. good managing broker. Yeah. And so I then went to work for the large firm that he went to work for a different franchise, but for, for that one. And, and um, yeah, so that's what happened. So I was with him for about six months and then I transitioned over to the, to that firm. So you went I, up, so you, I just want to say yeah. something really yeah. quick. I love the fact that Mark knew that that wasn't a good managing and that would have come from your previous job. You, so, you, so you, you <clears throat> pivoted, you pivoted really fast where a lot of people don't. They hang tight and hang tight and hang tight and don't make a move. And you did, which shows me that you're an extremely success oriented human. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. I think for me, I saw my own potential mm. better than he saw my potential. Yeah. And um, confidence. We've all had all kinds of jobs, whether it was, whether it was, you know, uh, my very first job ever was waiting tables. So whether it was, the manager of the restaurant or whatever, you you know who's a good manager. They make you feel good about what you're doing, make mm -hmm. you want to do more, make you want to do better. Yeah. And um, I wasn't getting that from him. And I knew that there was something bigger, better out there. Right. So you so you pivoted to the other firm. Did you were you mentored by anybody there at the at the other firm I after was, six months? I was the, the broker. Yeah. The broker actually, um, I would say within the first year um turned me on to the organization that the three of us all have in common oh um, and Buffini. Um, where we Buffini, yeah. have a, a coach Buffini yeah we have a coach with uh, uh Buffini and company um and she said hey you know there's a, a guy coming to town he does this free half day seminar and I think it's right <laughs> up your alley and um I said I'm free in a half day I've got time let's check it out and um <laughs> And I did. And I thought, okay, this is great. I can, I can implement a lot of what this guy is saying. And that was it. And I did, I took it away. I had pages That's and right. pages of notes. I began to implement some of the systems that he, he preached in his half day seminar. And I thought this was really good. And then a year later, um, he was coming back around again with a 
full three day conference. And um, I thought, gosh, look at how well I've done over the last year, just implementing these few things. Maybe there's more, bigger, better. And I thought, okay, I'll go to that conference. And I went to that conference and I signed up for coaching at that conference and haven't looked back since. I have shivers. I, my uh, hair on my arms is standing up. It's just, I love that. Why? Because, you know, when you're, when your ego is not so big that you can see that having help or having a coach or having support actually catapults you, you know, a lot of people would go to go see Brian and then end up a year later and go and not even realize that what they'd learned there is the thing that catapulted them. Right. And then they, they get stuck, stuck in this wash cycle where they never grow. So that tells me a lot again, too, of why you are who you are is because you're open to those kind of things. This is really cool. That's yeah. why I got shivers. Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. You know, for me, it was um, like the the systems that I learned were good and helped me do well. Mm -hmm. But after I went to his three day conference, what I realized was while I have my broker in the office and, you know, there are other, other good people around me, what I needed was that accountability from a coach or the, uh, the mentorship yes. that a coach would give me. Yes. And they were somebody who was not in my day to day out they're outside of my day to day, but I have a relationship with my coach that I know my coach, my coach knows me and my coach holds my feet to the fire on the, the, the goals that I want to, you know, accomplish mm -hmm. and doesn't let me get away saying, Oh, I was, I was too busy doing this. No, you know, you have <laughs> these goals. Here's what we said you were doing. You didn't do it. Right. So that was the part that really has taken me from, what I thought was doing pretty good to what I, I view in my mind as success. So, so you, so you get into coaching and, and this is about a year and a half in, it sounds like into your career somewhere in there. Yeah. 2001, um, 2002. Yeah. So, yeah. which was a wild time. Yeah, but, um, what were, what were yeah. some of the things that you take away that you remember from that after, after getting into coaching that you've, you've leveraged? Um, the very first year of coaching, so I guess this was um, 2002 is really when I signed up, I think. Um, the I had a coach for six months, maybe, and I really liked that coach. I really enjoyed talking with that coach, but he was transitioning out of coaching and moving on into a new part of his life. So he left and they got me another coach and I didn't quite gel with that coach. That was six months. And then I was probably two or three or four calls in with the new coach and it, it wasn't working. I was like, maybe this isn't for me. And then I spoke to somebody at the company and I said, look, you know, I had a great experience over here, but I'm not having such a good experience with this coach. And they said, okay, let's look at your heritage profile. Let's see what you need okay, we've got the perfect person for you. And yeah. I've been with the same coach for now 18 years. Can we ask wow. who that coach is? So that coach is Beverly Cairns. Yep. We've yep. met Beverly. She's, she's a superstar. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know Beverly. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. she's been there for a very long time. Yeah. She's, um, she's a superstar. Yeah. And um, I, I, think I, I, think I, do, I think I do okay. <clears throat> we have a, a group. So everybody that's coached by Beverly, we have a call once a month, a Zoom call um, with everybody that's, that's coached by Beverly. And it's amazing because I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I do. I consider myself to be successful in my job. Um, I'm, I'm well known in the community. Um, I, I don't think I'm th that great, but... I go and I go on these calls and I, I see what these people are doing and I feel like, oh my gosh, I must be a slacker. These guys are superstars. <laughs> and I, I think that that's actually really good. Whether it's true or it's not, you never really know. But the, yeah. for me, you know, like I'll give, you, I'll give you an analogy. When I was much younger, I used to play basketball three times a week. Yeah. And what I would play, you know, we'd play pickup pick up games at the park. and. Yeah. When I would play with guys who were not so good, my game wasn't so good. But when I would play with guys who were much better than me, my game just 
I was, I was, I was better. I was just much better. And I think the same is true in my business when I'm, when I'm, you know, networking and, and, and working with other agents that are really good at what they do. It helps, it helps bring my game up. And I, I enjoy that. So I really look forward to those calls because mm-hmm. I feel like I get to learn a lot and, and I share yeah. a lot too, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good yeah. organization to be a part of. That, you is, know, I, that is awesome. I'm, I'm picking up on a little theme there too, is you're a guy mm-hmm. that likes to play up. You like to yes. play up. Yes. You, you know, you left the first yeah, firm because yeah. you didn't see that happening. You got into the second firm. You saw an yep. opportunity to get yep. better, to improve. You surround yourself by people so you can play up. And you, you just talked about it in your yeah, it growing wasn't, up. Thanks. The, the initial... The, when I left the first firm, it wasn't an e- it, while it was an easy decision mm-hmm. to make, it wasn't so easy to pull the trigger right off the bat. And sure. I was unsure. So I went to a friend and mentor of mine who was a consultant. And I said, I know the decision I need to make, but I'm not sure how to take that next step. I'm talking to this firm and I'm talking to that firm and mm-hmm. I'm not sure where to go and what to do. And he said, okay, let's let's, let's do a spreadsheet. And Mm. I'm not a spreadsheet kind of person. I do a lot more spreadsheets now than I ever did because my, my business requires it. But at the time I was just a sales guy. And when I tell you that this guy, his, his job was a consultant. He now, now 20 something years later, he now does billion dollar mergers and acquisitions that could kind of tell you the type of guy that he is, but he's like, yeah, let's do a spreadsheet. And when we were done, we, um, he has a, he had a, you know, like a dry erase board that was magnetic and he printed out the spreadsheet and it was five rows of, of each piece of paper by five rows. Like that's how big the spread, you couldn't <laughs> shrink it down <laughs> or not put it on a couple of pieces of paper. And he's like, and here's it. I'm like, I was like, I was oh like glossing over like, oh my God. <laughs> but He's been a great mentor that when I need to to run something by, I can I can pick up the phone and call him and and run something by me. Help he helped me make that first decision and it really put me on a trajectory. And I'm 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 very uh, uh appreciative of that. A lot that's, of gratitude there. That's, that's so cool. That's awesome. That is so cool. So yeah. it sounds like it sounds like everything started coming together maybe in year four or five. No, I was I was doing well right out of the gates. I mean, okay. I was selling property. Okay. Um, but my my growth as a business person versus my growth as a salesperson okay. um, started to really take place when um, I was with that um, real estate company for five years. Um, I was number one in that office. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, mm-hmm. I left that office when I, when I went to go to work for that office, um, it was a 10 minute ride from my house to the office. Right. Like as in bike ride. Had all these... <laughs> no, as in a car ride. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. As in a car ride. Five years later, that 10 minute ride to the office was a 20 minute ride to the office. Mm. So now I'm in the car 40 minimally. 40 minutes each day if I, if I never leave the office. So, and I usually leave the office, go home, have lunch, go out to lunch. So I'm, I'm figuring I'm in the car now, probably about an hour a day. To me, that was not a good use of my time. Mm-hmm. So um, there was another franchise of the same company very close to where I lived. I went and I interviewed with them and I thought, I really like these guys. I like what they're doing. When I moved there was really when my, my mindset from sales guy to business guy, Ooh. really entrepreneur. That's when it really began to change because um, the way part of what I do in my business began to change. Because at the time, all I was doing was helping people buy houses and sell houses. Right. And I knew I wanted more than that, but I wasn't quite sure. So at, at that time, um, I was thinking about what else I wanted to do. And then a little bit before the bubble in 2008. So this is around 2007 after I had gotten there, I was there for a little while. Um, and Brian Buffini was warning us about the impending yeah. bubble. Yep. Um, 
and I take heed to what he says because he he seems to have his his thumb on mm -hmm. on uh, the market. Um, I was in a situation where I helped some clients uh, put an assemblage together of six houses in a row. Okay, and um, they were going to tear them down and build, and um, then the market crashed, and they said we're going to hold off. I said okay, great, and I was still doing what I was doing, and then they ended up. <laughs> I got a call from the, the president of that company that bought these houses. He said, can you come meet me in my office? I said, sure. So I went down, I, I come in, he goes, okay, I'm going to cut right to the chase. And he hands a Ziploc bag full of keys. And he goes, I, I need you to manage the, I need you to manage these houses. I said, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't do property management. He said, he said, yep, you do now. I don't care what you do. Forward me the rents. Don't, don't ever call me. I'm, I'm tired of this. And he had, he had worked for like six months trying to do it himself. And he's like, I have no desire to do this. So because of my relationship with that client, they'd, I'd done a lot of business with that guy in particular, with a couple of the people um, that are involved in that company. Three, mm -hmm. actually, I'd help buy and sell for a lot of them. I said, I can't, I can't really say no to this. Right. And the houses that we bought we bought without any care about the condition that they were in oh, yes. because <laughs> they were coming the down was they were going to knock them down. Yeah. So now all of a sudden I'm managing these six properties that are really a hell hole. They were just in horrible <laughs> condition. They were maintenance nightmares. The, yeah. the tenants were always complaining, but it was right as things, you know, things started to slow down in the sales. Mm -hmm. And I realized, wow, that, that rent check, they come in every, every month. Mm -hmm. So I started to transition and build at that point, build up a property management business. Okay. And so as I, as I grew with that company and I started to bring on more property, um, I started to get into both sales and property management. Um, in 2012, I started my own real estate firm. And we now help people buy and sell both residential commercial property. Yep. And we manage both residential and commercial property. We manage about roughly a hundred um, residential homes, uh, about eight small multifamily properties, you know, quadruplexes, sixplex, yep. this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we're now at about uh, 386,000 square feet of commercial space under management. Wow. So, I have a I have a quick question wow. because this is sure. you know I I laugh Ed and I laugh a lot because we we're accountability partners and we do the podcast and you know whatever but my to do list is always a mile long I and I mean that's with a full time assistant and a business partner and whatever so what does your team structure kind of look like so that you can manage two businesses because that's really what it is yeah. and how many people do you have working yeah. with you to do this job. Okay, good. that's a good question. So I have a full-time office manager, okay, um, and she's been with me since day one. We actually worked together in the previous company, okay. And I asked she the she had told me she was looking to do something different, <clears throat> and I said, "How about if you came to work with me?" And she said yes. So from from 2012 day one, in that April, she has worked with me, okay, um, and she is responsible for all of the back office, um, so it popped up on my screen. There we go. The, all the back office accounting, bookkeeping, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a full time assistant. I have mm -hmm. a full time property manager. Um, I have, um, mm -hmm. a full time maintenance tech for the property management side of things for maintenance. <clears throat> I have a, uh, maintenance coordination okay. team, um, that, is available 24 seven, 365 for all of the maintenance. Okay. And I have a virtual assistant team in India. They, we call them remote team members now, you know, all the yep. proper politically correct terms are, are constantly changing, but they're virtual assistants. They don't, okay. um, it's a team in India. It works really well because um, they, when, when we leave at night, a few hours later, they come, they come on. And so there's a whole yeah. bunch of stuff that yeah. they do. And when I come in in the morning, I have an email. Here's what we did. And so yes. they don't, they don't talk 
they don't talk with clients. They don't talk with, um, you know, with tenants or owners, you know, landlords. Mm -hmm. um, they just do the work in the background. And um, they send out emails for us, communication for us. They, they move invoices in my software behind the scenes. They make sure everything lines up. And they're extremely competent. That's amazing. And, and easy to work with. I think there's been literally in the four or five years that I've had them, I, I would I would say I can count on one hand the mistakes they've made. Literally, wow. if if that. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. A great well, job. A wise man, Mark, once told me that a virtual assistant is only <laughs> as good as how you train them. So there, there's your answer right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very I'm much. I'm just amazed at how- well, Sure, you got to tell them what you want done and then they do it. Yeah. Yeah. And this all came about from a, a client handing you a, a baggie full of keys saying, I love that. This. I love that. But you saw I have the opportunity. A, a great appreciation. I have a great appreciation um, for that client and, yes. and giving me something I didn't know that I wanted or needed. Right. You know, I tell you, I, I've always kind of been a big picture kind of person, kind of always looking to the future. When I when I first got in the business, I'd say a year after I got in the business, what I really thought I wanted to do was commercial real estate. Okay. Um, but I wasn't sure about it. So what I, what I did was I have friends in my community, two different guys that I know, one who's really big into um, office space and one who's very big into retail space. Yeah. And I spent a day with each of them and I shadowed them. And... Um, I did it the same week. I met with one on like a Monday and one on a Wednesday. And I was, I was really trying to figure out, do I want to make a change? And um, at that time, I didn't want to be involved in retail. I didn't think it was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, the office, I was very intrigued and I was very interested. And when all was said and done, you know, I was, you know, I hadn't been married too long, had at least one kid at the time. And I said, yeah, I really, I, I really like this. Okay. What do I need to do to get started? And, um, and he said to, to have the success that you're having now, meaning to make the money that you're already making, yeah, you're going to have to start over again. Yes. You're going to have to probably work at it for a good two years to get to the level that you're at. So I, I had a new wife and, you know, kids. And I was like, mm, I don't want to take that step back. Yeah. Um, he said, well, either that or just invest your own money. And I was like, oh, what money? <laughs> so, <laughs> I have kids. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. It's exactly right. So, um, so I just, I put it off. But when I started my own company, um, one of the first things I did was I, um, I had a, a logo done. And I knew I, I, the, the logo um, was clear in my mind of what I wanted. And on the, the card um, in my logo, which is, you know, the, the golden group uh, yeah. real estate yeah. is I have um, animation of houses in the back. I have commercial buildings. So um, yeah, let's see if I have a, a card. I, can, I actually can maybe, have it. I don't it. know if you can. Can you see? Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you see yeah. that? So yeah. that was that was yeah. way before I even had an inkling of, of how I would ever get back in, how I would ever get into commercial real estate. Yep. And, but I, I'm a big believer. You put it, you put it out into the world. And, um, if you, you know, put out positive vibes and you put out to the world that there's something you want to do, it'll happen. And yeah, no, that's a number that's... of years later, after I had started my, my business, uh, a friend of mine who's very involved in commercial real estate came to me and said, I, I just bought um, I just bought two buildings and I'd like you to manage them. I was like, Oh, here I am. And so I went from, um, two, two office buildings to now 386,000 square feet and hopefully another 30,000 will be picking up next yeah. week. But anyway, That's so incredible. yeah, thank God. It's great. You know, what, what I love about yeah, the com fun. another common thread in your story is that you, an opportunity will come and you just don't say, no, I don't do that. You, you figure out a way to do it and it opens up some doors. Oh, I'm really, really big about saying yes to the world. Say yes and we'll figure a way to work it out. And if I can't, I can't. That's good. I love it. You know, be, before we get into some of the other lessons learned, um, 
one question I want to ask is, you know, as you were as you were starting to hit your stride in this area, was there was there a time that you failed? And mm -hmm. what did you learn from that? Oh, gosh. Failure? So one that jumps oh, sure. out. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, it cost me a lot of money. Let's hear it. <laughs> a lot of aggravation. So, no, but this is I think it's all it's all part of life. I mean, nobody is 100 percent successful all the time. You have to. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to fail forward. I hate using a cliche like that, but it's so true. I try to teach that to my kids. You're not always going to be successful. Learn your lesson and figure out what you did wrong and move on. So, um, in my um, in my property management business, we were managing uh, I don't know at that time 175 doors or something like that. And when you when you start getting up there. There's a lot of maintenance that goes on. And one of the, the normal progressions for a property manager when they start growing their property management business to a, a, a nice size is they start a maintenance company mm -hmm. because they have a built in need for continuous ongoing maintenance and repairs might as well capture that income. It's a, it's a great business model. Right. I hired a guy. I hired a guy who was um, had been a contractor, ran his own business for many, many years, understood the business, understood subcontractors. And I hired him to run my maintenance company. Yep. Um, and in the, in the end, I lost like $20,000, which in the big scheme of things, I mean, at the time, it was a lot of money. And it's, right. um, it's a lot of money no matter what. But sure. in the big scheme of things, it was a very inexpensive lesson to what could have been a lot worse if I would have allowed it to go in other yeah. directions. And so I changed the model of, um, of how we do maintenance. I had to have a full-time maintenance tech, but then I, I, I sub everything else out. I have a maintenance coordination team mm -hmm. um, that answers the phone and answers emails. And um, so it, it works out better that way rather than having an in-house maintenance company. But that is a lesson yeah. that cost me time, time, money, and aggravation. Uh, but I think I learned a lot from it. So. so I have a question. So would you say from the outside listening in, I would hear you say that hiring out sometimes is better than having not only your real estate business, your leasing, you know, property management, and also having another business, which is the maintenance. So at some point, it's sometimes it's better to hire out and maybe pay a little bit more so that you don't have to do that. Is that what you're saying? If you're not, tell me. Um, no, I, I, I am. But I mean, for my unique situation, my maintenance coordination team is our remote team members. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I don't have... So, oh. Right. The, it, I don't have somebody sitting at a desk in my office. Yes. Um, doing the work with their feet up on the table, whatever. I have remote team members with very, very specific sets of instructions, systems that there's nothing that could go wrong in a house that they don't know who to call for the problem. Wow. Got it. Once Got in it. a while, they want to be, they want to be, they want to be sure and they go, can you please, they'll put it on hold, send an email and say, we think we want to send it here. Will you verify that's who you want us to dispatch it to? Got you. So what happens is, believe it or not, my um, maintenance coordination costs for the people who do the, not who do the, the, the hammer and nailing or the plumbing, mm -hmm. but that my in-house cost for the employees yeah. is... 25 to 30 percent of the cost of the the person who was sitting in my office yeah got you so my goal was, i was like wow not only am i saving a ton but i can recoup that which i lost because that guy right. didn't do his job and right. you know, i didn't oversee it yeah i take responsibility because i should have overseen it better but sure. i hired him in because i thought it was a great idea to do and i didn't properly manage him so right. that's right. where i feel like i failed um, yeah. Not I hired a, 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 a bad guy. I hired somebody who I didn't I didn't oversee and manage properly. I understand. So for whatever that's worth. Yeah. And then you well, built a system where 
you could oversee it, manage it, but in a remote model and built the standard operating procedures. Yeah, and, for doing and my, so. yeah, my property manager, like every time there's a, a work order that goes out, my property manager gets a copy. It's, it's a whole system in my software. They, when a request comes in, they go in and they, every conversation they have, everything they do is log with the right. date and the time that they did it. Right. So I can follow the whole process at any time. That's great. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Ed, do you have a question? Yeah, I think, you know, reflecting a little bit on where you are now, and I do want to say, um, you know, I've referred, what, two clients to you in the last 18 months or so, two buyers, and had great, great experiences, yep. took, took fabulous care of my folks. Um, I Thank know you. that um, you do a really good job on your life balance piece. Mm. Um, and I, uh, you have pretty good boundaries there and I'd love to get some insight from you on that, on, on, uh, how you manage that sure. with your clients and set those expectations and the results that you get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, first of all, thank you for the referrals. It, it, working with first time home buyers and single family home buyers, while I love the property management side of things. Uh, that's, that's what I love to do. I love helping people buy and sell their homes. It's just been what I've done from the very beginning. And, um, I'm honored to get those referrals and thanks. And I was glad that I could keep in touch with you and, yeah. and, and that they've reported back that they were happy. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm very systems oriented in, in everything. And it used to be that I would come in and I would go home and I would come back to the office and I would, I would be at the office until midnight. And mm -hmm. um, I was not as always so systematized in my own um, balance, work-life balance, uh, but I've become a lot more as I've matured in the business. Um, the one thing I've always done is, as you know, I'm Jewish and I'm Sabbath observant, Friday afternoon until Saturday after sundown, my phone is off. Everything is off. My computer, I don't, I don't do any work whatsoever, bar none, no questions asked. And when I first got in the business, um, when I first got in the business, people were like, you're not going to work on Saturday. You're never going to make it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, you know, look, the <laughs> Jewish people have been around a long time. They seem to do okay. You know, <laughs> um, I think I'm going to do, okay. I think I'll find a way to make it work. Yeah. And um, I have found I that my that. clients really, <laughs> I have found that my clients really respect, my yes. non-Jewish clients really respect. Yes. Yes. I take a day off of my Sabbath. And here's what I've found. Um, there are uh, uh, all real estate agents, you know, contrary to popular belief, take a couple of days off every week. They don't always take off Saturday and Sunday, but at some point they're taking time off. Mm -hmm. I take off Saturday. I work by appointment only on Sunday. I'm here for you Monday through Friday, business hours. If we're in the middle of a transaction, I make myself available in the evenings for calls if they're needed. But yeah. I work business hours and by appointment on Sunday. And my folks respect it. But what it does for me is it allows me to bring everything that I got to my work with my clients. Because what I have found, and I'll, I'll make a book recommendation to you, yes. which is called The Power of Full Engagement. And okay. I read it like 20 years ago. And I got to tell you, it is unbelievable. Anthony Schwartz, and I can't remember who the other author was, but a Anthony Schwartz wrote, um, or Tony Schwartz, yes. either Tony or Anthony, I don't remember what he goes by, Schwartz, The Power of Full Engagement. And, and the, the, um, the meat and bones of that book is simply... It's not how much time you bring to a task. It's how much energy you bring to a task. Mm -hmm. And I have a, I have a very close friend who has a very large, successful law firm. Yeah. And this guy's busy and he has five kids all, you know, between like, I don't know, between like second or third grade and 12th grade. And they have a very busy house and he's home every night for dinner. Yep. And, and I'm like, how do you do that? And this was years, a number of years ago. And I tell you what, I started, I started stopping at six, six 30. Mm -hmm. And then I do for me at my house. I do, I do for me and for the people that I love and care about. And 
I get recharged and ready to go the next day. And I find myself a lot more productive during the day when I, when I work a normal work schedule um, than, than not. So I, I systematize my time off and I just try to give as much as possible to when I'm there, bring the energy to it rather than the time. I love that. I also think that clients and our teams and even our family respect the fact that when you lay out a plan and you follow through on that plan, they love that because there's a, there's a clear expectation set. Hey, Mark doesn't talk to you on Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's just the way it goes. And you don't break that rule. So there's, so you're not sending a mixed message. Yeah. Yeah. And other agents appreciate the honesty too. It's not just the clients. It's that the people that, that you're working with, Mm -hmm. um, the other agents also very much, um, appreciate that and gives them a break that they probably wouldn't have had otherwise. Right. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Now I, I respect the heck out of you for that. Um, and I, and I think your clients do too. I think, I think sometimes agents, we, we fear making those uh, statements sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's like, Hey, I don't, I'm, I'm not available. We always want to be available. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think it's great. Yeah, I just thought of some, I just thought of some funny. Yeah. Uh, um, right. Thanks. I, I, I just thought of something funny. I was once invited on a, a panel of top agents in the, in the association. I've been, um, I'm thankful and honored to have been in the top 10 of the DeKalb Association of Realtors. Since wow. I'm a member, I w- they just had their awards banquet banquet this last week, and number seven in in the association. So I'm, I'm wow. thankful for that. Yeah. Um, but they at one point there were some top producers from the association who were um, invited to be on a panel, <clears throat> and it was a great panel. And everybody everybody there does something differently, like yeah. the way they do their business. Everybody was different. So it was a really neat panel, but somebody had asked about, well, you, you know, my not, when do you take time off? And I told him I don't work. And a woman came up to me after um, the event. And she says, you know, I was, I was really moved by the fact that you take a Sabbath, your Sabbath every single week. I said, well, well okay, thank you very much. You know, you, you should do it. She goes, I've, I've decided I'm going to do the same thing. My Sabbath is going to be on Tuesday. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's so funny. So, it's very oh, funny. I was like, okay, great. You, okay. Everybody needs one. Take it whatever you want. <laughs> Take it whatever you want. It. Oh, that's my gosh. Great. Okay, well, we probably should wrap this up because we could talk to Mark for, you know, 24 hours. Yeah, we but, sure could. But Ed and I have, we have. two. We've, we've all spent time. I've spent hours talking to Ed. I've spent hours talking to you. So I know. I know. And we love you, by the yes, way. Yes, we do. Um, so we have two questions. So, Ed, Thanks. I'll ask the first one. Is that good? And then you can ask the second? Oh, you can ask both. I don't remember oh. what the questions ah! are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here I'm, we go. I'm, I'm plotting my Sabbath. <laughs> I know. I know. By the way, it doesn't change, mister. It's supposed to be. You know. Okay. So Mark, if you could go back to the beginning of your career, is there anything mm-hmm. that you would change knowing what you know now? Because we have a lot of new realtors that listen to this podcast and we we get a lot of feedback that they love to hear this so do you have a little thing that you want to share that's that's an interesting question um i I don't know i'm not big into you know regretting sure the mistakes that i made um so i don't know that i would change anything okay you know if if i knew what it, you know i guess really if i knew what i knew now and was starting would i do anything differently yeah yeah i would be more i would i would be more systematized okay from the beginning even when i wasn't really the big top producer blah 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 meaning okay. like when i only had when i only had a transaction or two going on at a time you know, rather than, you know, right now, I feel like sometimes I have a lot of balls in the air because I've got a lot of transactions going on, which right. is good. And I'm thankful. And I've built a team to help support me with that. But while I was in the beginning and new, I didn't treat my business like a business mm. when I was slow. So yes. what happened is when I got busy, I found myself having to learn how to treat it like a business and get systems in place and organized and 
if, if there was one thing I would probably do differently, it was if I have confidence in myself to be successful, then I need to prepare um, for, you know, when I'm, when I'm busy and I am successful now when I'm not, you know, yes. many, 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 many years ago, I was, I was in the restaurant business and, the, and it, 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 there was an inter interesting dynamic that I noticed. And that was, um, I worked for successful, busy restaurants, had a line out the door. And when there's a line out the door and every table is full and the kitchen is slammed and the waiters and waitresses are running and the hosts and hostesses are doing whatever and the managers are overseeing it all, it, it kind of just ran just right on schedule. Everything yes. was smooth and great. And yeah. then you take these successful people and you empty the restaurant and now you only have, you're only half full. They could like fall apart. Like they're, oh my gosh, that, that didn't get out in the time. And it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Mm. But the reality is if they didn't have systems in place for when they were busy, then when they got busy, they were, they were just going to fail and then people wouldn't come back. Yeah. You can, you can know how to give great service, but if you, if you get really, really busy and that great service goes to hell in a handbasket, then you, you can bet the referrals are going to stop and you got to right. know how to do that. So I think I would have just taught myself sooner the systems that I wanted to have in place for when I got busy. I like that's that. A, that's a really good one. And, uh, Jeffy, I did, I did think of the next question. Okay. So I can, <laughs> I can ask I'll you lay that. it out for you, Ed. There go you ahead. Go. I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just take a swing at it here. But, um, you know, you've had a lot of clients over the years, Mark, and um, we're wondering if there was one client that you've had that really impacted your life and they don't know it and you'd like to take a chance to thank them for that. Who would it oh, be? Oh, gosh. Be? Oh, gosh. I can tell you who the worst client was. <laughs> The worst client okay, was me. we'll take that. The worst client was you? <laughs> well, I'll start while I'm, while I'm thinking about it. The worst client, um, not from a, from, I put my own house up for sale at the time. This is, this is 2005 or six. Yeah. We were moving to a bigger house. Um, I had rented my house out for a, a few years. I was ready to put it on the market and my house was on the market, no joke, between four and five times longer than any other house <laughs> I've ever sold, ever. And I, I found that it's very easy to consult other people. Uh -huh. But when, when, you know, when you're doing your own thing, it's very hard. I finally turned to um, a guy, Arthur, who worked with me for 20 years, sweetheart of a guy, learned a lot from him, really enjoyed having him on my team. I, I looked at him and I said, I, I don't, I can't understand why is my house not selling? And he looked at me and he said, no, really? He looked at me and he said, are you ready to listen? I said, sure. He goes, no, no, no. You really, this is different than you listening than you listening to a client, which you do very well. Are you ready to listen to see what you're doing wrong? And I said, okay, I'm open. Tell me. He goes, nope, nope, let's go to the house. We went to the house. He says, you see that? You painted the whole house, but your daughter's room. You see the yellow and the green and the, the checks and the all the stuff you did for your daughter? Got to go. I, I know you have a, a love for the fact that you painted your daughter's bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's not neutral. Got to make it neutral. And you've got a beautiful front porch off this house, but it makes your living room dark because of that overhang. You got to put lighting in here. And he, <laughs> this, was, this was like a 30 minute walkthrough of all the I things that needed it. to be done. Yeah. And they were, they were things that were really easy for me to, to see in somebody else's house, but I couldn't see in my own. Yeah. I did. I took, it was probably two or three weeks to get all the work done, sold the house in three weeks. And it had been on the market for about a year. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> so, That's a, this is perfect. True, true story. True story. Good job, Arthur. Um, Art, I think I think you just thanked Arthur. Uh, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's it. Um, I, I'm trying to think. Look, I I um I have become friends with so many clients um, 
over the years. And it's kind of hard to, to pick one, but I'll, 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 I will say there's, there's one client in particular that, that I thought of while I was telling, I was trying to think of who. And um, I've been dealing with this client um, on the commercial side. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> been dealing with this client on the commercial side for about probably, I think, six years now. Yeah. And um, um, they have brought me business that I had always wanted. Um, and I, I earn a good living from the commissions that I make from this person. Mm -hmm. um, the work is very hard and very detailed and takes a lot of time and effort. And I'm happy to do it, but I'll tell you why I'm happy to do it. This client champions me to do well with other clients and to get more business. Mm -hmm. This client, um, he's let me be a reference. Do you need a reference? Mm -hmm. Like give him my name and number so I can tell him how great you are. Oh. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah, I know. I, I know about those buildings. Um, if there's any way I can be of help, let me be of help where, you know, somebody might take the, th the thought process and say to themselves, gosh, if he gets busier with them over there, it might take away from the work that Mark is doing for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah. this, this is, this has never crossed his mind. And that just makes it that much stronger that I want to take care of him and his business. Yeah. Um, he's a very good friend, but he's, he's somebody who champions me to, to do well, to do better, to, to grow, to become a better uh, real estate broker and woo, forever grateful for that client. Oh, yeah. that is, that's a and if he, story. if he hears this, he'll know who if he hears this, he'll know who he is. Okay, we'll awesome. leave it at that. We'll leave it, we'll at, that. Leave it at that. Well, okay. I think that's a great one to wrap it up. And uh, we've too. learned a lot here on this today. Yes, Any we have. Any parting words there, Jeff? I just, you know, Mark, I knew I loved you from the day I had my nose swabbed with you. And to sit here and just get to know you on a on a deeper level is an absolute gift for both Ed and I. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for making time in your busy schedule. And I really feel that when people hear this podcast, there's a lot to learn. Absolutely. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. I'm, I'm honored that you guys invited me on. I've, I've, uh, uh, you know, I, I remember when I met each of you. Yeah. Um, uh, we met Jeffy when we were getting our nose swabbed, and then right. Ed, um, you. Oh, I was it. I think it was you <laughs> who said, "Oh, what are you? What are you doing during this break?" I think it was you, Jeffy. So, what are you doing during this break? And I'm like, well, I don't really know. You're like, I'm hanging out with some agents. Why don't you come? And you introduced me. To, I think you introduced me to yeah. Ed, and we sat I down did. by the pool over there yep. in Phoenix. And yep. Uh, We've become friends and I appreciate that. And I thank you for the opportunity to come on and share my story. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.